Hi folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden and today we're going to make something a little different. Well, I believe we've made one in the past, but it's been some time. What we are going to make is a ribbon bookmark. Let's turn down and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I have the beads I plan on using in this. Um, we're going. It takes uh, two strands, one on either side of our ribbon. These are our... Um, These are our uh, ends. Now, you can get them with a little point in here, and I do have some, but I don't use these on, that on ribbon bookmarks because the little point tends to cut into the ribbon, and uh, these are great for leather with the point, but not for ribbon. So if I can't find any without the point, I will actually cut the point off so that it doesn't dig into the ribbon. So that's what these are. They're little end, end pieces. We've got a couple of jump rings, some uh, crimp tubes, and our beads and such. This little guy is going to be at the end. And then we're going to go the little guy here oops left a bead out there we go so they're going to be strung like this on either side you won't need two because what this does is the ribbon goes in the side the pages of your book and then your beaded portion hangs out the ends on the top and the bottom. So the first thing we need to do, well, it's not the first thing. We'll set the ribbon aside for now. This is the ribbon we are going to use. We'll set that aside. And we're going to get our uh, green emerald soft flex out. So what we're going to do with that is, we don't need very much. See, this bead strand isn't very long. Probably only need five or six inches. So we'll cut this a little bit off. And the first thing we're going to do is hook our charm onto the bottom. Now, if you don't want a charm on the bottom, just or bead strand, normal bead strand, you can use a small, like a tiny uh, seed bead or something at the bottom here and just use it as a, like a stopper bead and just, um, just hook it to the bottom and wrap around it as something to, to end it with. So we'll get our crimping pliers out and we'll crimp this right here. Good. Tug test. Now we're just going to string our beads up like we would with anything else. Let's see if this little guy will take both strands. I'm hoping he will because he's a druk, so he should have a slightly bigger hole, but there we go. Now this will hang on the um, on the outside of your book, down the spine, and one will just hang out the bottom. So anyway, we are going to put on a jump ring, and we're going to <laughs> jumped over the jump ring. It's all right; we know how to work it. So get it the jump ring so it's in here. And go through our cramp tube, through our bead. And this one's going to fight just like the other one did. But I'm sure I can get it to go through since I did the other one. Though it will be a tight fit. Come on, baby, go. 
No. Come on, where are you at? There you go. Now I'm going to take my pliers and hold on to this little guy here and just pull these guys down. Come on you. This one is tight on the droop so it doesn't want to pull really well. So I actually may need to reverse my pliers and put them down here to pull it through. Looks pretty good right there though. So we'll crimp that up and then cut the extra. So, very good. So now we'll cut this extra bit off. And there is our first piece. Now we'll, um, there it is, make up the second one. So we need another hunk of wire. Again, not atrociously large. The only reason you want as much as you do is because it, you'll notice I had a little difficulty putting the um, the wire through at the top and getting it nicely set. And the main reason for that was because the wire was a little bit shorter than I like it. Not atrociously, but a little bit. This side I don't worry about as much because I've got all this stuff I can do if I need to. I think I'll make that just a touch bigger. There we go. Okay, tighten that up. Make sure it's on there good and start putting on our beads. We do this side just the same as the other. So. Work our little droop through here. Go. And on with the other. Okay. Now you can see I cut this one a little bit longer, I think, than the other one, and I certainly am not going to complain about that. Um, I didn't measure them, but they're probably about four inches, giving me working room for these. This little guy is very stubborn but the hole is just big enough. So I'm going to get hold of my pliers and since the string is right there, I'm going to 
push that clover back up there and get hold of it. Give it a pull. I'm going to let these come down some. But I don't want the beads to go out like this one just tried to do. Now we'll pull it up again. Come on, you. It's close enough I can get it by hand now most of the way. I will pull you up this last time. Well, nope, it won't quite be the last time because I got a gap, big gap right there. So we need to push that down. And now we'll pull. Now this one doesn't want to pull now, so we'll take hold of it and pull it with the pliers. Now I think we're about right. So we gave it a little gap so we could get our pliers in our crimping pliers and those in the center and squish oops jump ring got in the way that is one thing you have to watch for your jump ring can sometimes get in your way and become a problem so now we're going to cut this extra off and now our two bead strands are done. Now, as I say, these are going to hang on either side of your ribbon. And we need a paperback book. I generally make these the size of paperbacks um, to uh, measure how big we want this to be. Now, I can never remember, so I always get a paperback out and try. We want at least the length of the book plus a little bit because they have to go into our little um, end caps here and then you still want to give them a little bit of room to flip around to hang. So I think this is good right here. So we'll give it a snip, put our book away, and our ribbon too for that matter. We don't need it anymore. Let's measure, see how long this is. I think it's like nine inches or something like that if I remember right. Not quite nine eight and a half so the next step we have to do and this one to me is the most difficult is we have to glue in the ends now I say glue because I'm going to use both glue and fold them over I use a little Loctite to keep them in place so that I don't have to worry about them coming loose so we'll get out the the um, the silicone mat because I always glue and try to glue and paint on my silicone mat so I don't have to worry about getting glue or uh, th anything on my regular mat. Get out the Loctite. Now, like I say, to me this is the most difficult part because it's going to fight with you as you try to put it together. So put a drop of Loctite right on the end of your bead. Okay. Now I'm not going to worry about getting that in instantly because like I say, it's going to fight me anyway. And I notice this side is a teeny bit frayed, so we're going to cut that fray off. And then we're going to put this on here and push it down some so it'll start sticking in place. And we'll do the same with the other side. Yes, go ahead, do that. Now, if you have a pair of pliers that uh, you don't care about and you don't mind getting glue on, then you can use them for this project here. Okay. And I do have a pair of those, but where are they? Well, I really do like these pliers, but 
I don't use them very often because I use my skinny ones. So we'll use these. We'll start with this side and we're going to pull these two together somewhat. Do the same on the other side. Now, as you can tell, I'm letting this uh, glue dry a little bit so I don't have to worry about it trying to pop out as much. So now I'm just going to fold these in this top one here that's closest. I'm just going to push it down. I do the same with this side to start with. Now, Sometimes these have longer edges than the other side, than one to the other, and like this one, see how it pushed it back out? I should have paid attention to that and um, cut off a little bit, but I didn't, so too late to worry about it now, I think. So now that we've got that pushed down good, we take our pliers again, hold our end piece, and bolt this piece over on top like so. Squish it good. Now it's still a little gooey because I just got it stuck to my finger. So that is one thing to be careful of because the excess glue will pop out the ends. Okay, now come on you. Okay, there we go. And that's why I say to sometimes use a pair of pliers you don't really care for because if there's any excess glue and it hasn't dried enough, it's going to come off and get on your pliers. See, I had a little bit here that I'm scraping off with my finger now. So we'll put those aside now because we don't need that pair anymore. And I just knocked something down, but I'll get that fixed. So now... You can give this a little more time to dry if you wish to, and you probably should. But since we're on video, I'm going to do this right away. And it and it's pretty dry. So let's... It's a little goo, but not too bad. So I think we're fine to take it out. It's the wonders of super glue. It dries pretty fast. Now the next step is simply to hook our beaded pieces onto our ribbon. So we'll get our pliers out. And open our jump ring. And then it just hooks on the end on the, in this little connector spot. And yes, if you want to, you can go directly onto your a ribbon. You don't have to put in the jump ring if you don't wish to. But if you don't, then you're going to have to do the ribbon portion first. And then um, do the beaded section because you're going to have to have your ribbon all ready to go when you um, put in your... when you hook your uh, beaded section up because it's going to have to go directly onto there. And there we go. Isn't that cool? So there is our beaded bookmark. And how this works, if you've never used one or if you haven't seen one before, is just where you're finished laying off reading, you put the ribbon in the middle. This one's all twisted. Let's get it straightened up before we do this. Okay. Now you just put your ribbon in the middle like so with the bigger section on the top so that when you turn it, as you can see, the ribbons are in both sides and it hangs down on the spine and then down on the bottom here. Now I noticed that I made this ribbon a little longer than I normally do because it's uh, got more room than normal, but that's all right. 
So there's how it hangs with the down the spine on the top one and then just hangs out the bottom. So there is our bookmark made with a bead strands and ribbon. And I hope you enjoyed making this with me. Didn't it turn out pretty? Still have a kink in it, it looks like. Untwist. There we go. So there she is. That pretty. So I hope you enjoyed making this beautiful beaded bookmark with me. Isn't it pretty? Um, and you don't, you can use any, um, if you use a different size ribbon, you can see mine's pretty thin. Uh, you can, if you can find these caps in a slightly larger size. And I have, so I know you can. But, um, yeah, there she is. And you can use as many beads or as little beads as you want, um, depending on how long of a bookmark you want it to be. Um, this is actually just a tad bigger than I nor longer than I normally make my bookmarks, but I liked this bead uh, confirmation. So, um, yeah, you can. There you go. And like I say, it just goes into your book like so with this piece down on the bottom or the other piece depending on how you put it in your book um, and this piece hanging down the spine aren't those pretty i really like it i hope you enjoyed making this with me this has been rose from in rose's garden and we've been making a ribbon and bead bookmark